go wrong. What? Next up on my Steam library, I'm playing Reigns. Reigns is a kingdom simulator. You are the ruler of a medieval kingdom, and you are presented with scenarios, um, dilemmas, which you have to make decisions over. The developers have managed to boil down the complexities of ruling a kingdom to simple binary choices in this game, and the results of those choices have outcomes, effects on four different factions within your realm. Uh, they are the church, the people, the army and your treasury. And the idea of the game is to rule as long as possible by balancing these factions. Uh, your reign is over if any one of these factions becomes depleted, empty, or if any one of them gets maxed out. And that's quite a cool little twist because it means you can't just uh, favor any one too much now the endings depending on what faction you've maxed out or depleted are uh, the ending to your reign is quite funny they range from actually they range from the hilarious to the grizzly uh, how your reign ends depending on what one you've, uh, what one you've maxed out or depleted so I, I see quite a lot of them in the time I was playing and they're all quite grisly or quite funny. But fear not, because once your reign ends, as all royal dynasties, or most royal dynasties will attest, the, uh, the rule continues, the realm continues under a new king and you get to play that king as well and the king after and the king after. So your new king takes over and you get to do, do it all again and the, the year that the king takes over from is obviously like the same year that your last king died. There's like this whole timeline in between your actual reigns so that you see how how long each king ruled for. The, the game generates like a name for them uh, and you can see exactly how long and what the king did during his reign, if he did anything notable at all. So as your reigns go, you unlock new characters. You start off with like several different characters in your court, your general, your archbishop, and uh, so forth, several more. But uh, new characters can be unlocked. And as you unlock new characters and bring them into your court, they bring with them new cards, new scenarios and dilemmas with new choices to make. And uh, so you'll get new things to ponder over as you bring new characters into your into your court you're also like project uh, presented with three objectives during your reign to try for you to try and uh, complete they could be as simple as like start a war start a crusade or uh, uh, find out uh, unmask a traitor that sort of thing and they will be uh, rewarded with some unlocks and things like that or a title of, for your king when he dies he'll be called uh, like something like the just or the the hoarder or something like that that's a uh, quite a cool little thing you can look at on your timeline if your king's earned a, a title there are also like items that can be unlocked that uh, have a permanent effect or semi-permanent effect on your on your reign and uh, some of them continue into subsequent reigns afterwards like you can uh, you could build a barn and this barn if you deplete your people you can uh, then resort to this barn to feed the people and get their bar a little back a little back up but doing that costs money so you've got to have the money in the treasury to to start with to do that and there are there are several items that can be unlocked and have sort of permanent or semi-permanent effect on your reign and maybe the reign after so as far as i can tell the objective of the game is just to rule as long as possible um there's some cryptic uh thing about tricking the devil as the ultimate uh, objective of the games i think there's some deal with the devil that you've done that you've been cursed which is why you're living through these reigns time and time again and your your ultimate objective is to trick the devil to get out of it but i haven't really figured that bit out yet but uh, i think other than that you just want to try and have as long a reign as possible the longest reign i had was like 70 years 
uh, and try and unlock as much as possible. Try and get as many new characters into your core and see as many of the new scenarios and choices and uh, unlock as many of the different kind of items and uh, complete ob the objectives. So if you see, once you've seen this game, it won't surprise you to, to learn that it was uh, a mobile game. It seems like a perfect little mobile game where you would you simply swipe left or swipe right. It's like Tinder, but as a medieval kingdom simulator. And uh, so it's a yeah, a perfect little mobile game. If if playing this on PC for like four and a half hours has convinced me of anything, it's convinced me to to buy it on my on my phone because i think it'd be a great little game to have on your phone that you just dip in and out of play for a couple of minutes at a time and just uh, leave it on your phone and progress through it at your own pace as you like it it's not really the game i'd want to sit down at a pc and play for long periods of time but having it on your phone yeah would be ideal but it is only like 199 on PC, so that's a brilliant little price, and that's its full price. My God, if you if it's on a sale for less than that, definitely pick it up. It's a little bit more on when I looked on the Android Play Store, the Google Play Store. It was like 275, and that's a little bit of a, a turnaround to what mobile games and PC games are usually priced at. It's usually the PC game they try and charge you like uh, you know five pounds for a game on PC that was usually that was like 99p on mobile but uh, I still think for 275 it's well worth it to get on your mobile device so if that was if anything if I take anything from this if I give any recommendation from this it'd be yes it's a great game but buy it on your mobile rather than your PC okay so that's Reigns a uh, cool funny little indie casual kingdom simulator <laughs>